Brian Macklin. Radiothon. Radiothon. Radiothon 2024. Yeah. Presented by Callan Construction. This hour is brought to you by Johnson Centrifugal Technology. The Boucher.com uh, phone number, by the way, is 414-978-9500. A portion of all donations will be made. Uh, made will be matched with uh, by Rogan Shoes. You choose to donate. Sure, you can't stand Bob and Brian, but they have some pretty cool friends. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the program. Number 19 in your programs. Yes, I'm going to say it. Number one in your hearts. Robin Young. Good morning, Robin. That is so cheesy. Come on. Is that the best? You guys are the best, but that line there. All right. All right. Let me try. Before so, like you got to hit every time at bat. <laughs> No, I right. No, you didn't. Did you? In the big picture, I didn't do very well. Because, uh, failed a heck of a lot more than I succeeded when you come when it comes to hitting. Well, welcome to the club. That's what we do here too. We fail more than we <laughs> succeed. How have you been, Robin? I can't complain. I was telling Eric a minute ago. How bad can it be? I'm still here talking to you guys. Are you uh, are you uh, in Arizona this morning? You've got to be right. I I am yes enjoying enjoying the week with my oldest daughter and my grandson that are southern folks now they've been living in Charlotte for quite a while my oldest daughter mm-hmm. I, I I put a U-Haul behind her car after she graduated from ASU here Arizona State and she didn't know what to do and. Uh, Gumby had an older daughter that she had grown up with, uh, Jim Gantner. Yeah. And she lived in Charlotte and said, Charlotte, North Carolina is a great place. You ought to come here and, uh, you know, see if you can't find something to do. So I figure load up the U-Haul, drive her there, drop her off. She'll be back in a year. Well, it's <laughs> about. 20 years later, and she never came back. So I don't know that what that means for me, but uh, every time they come here, it's uh, it's a pleasure for us to to see them. Guest room. Yeah, guest room. Okay. Uh, the house she grew up in is that we lived in for 30 some odd seven years uh, is. We're not our residence anymore. We're right. about a mile street uh, where we have a home that about seven, eight years ago, my, my wife designed the house, and I got to, to design my living quarters, which is my shop in the back where mm-hmm. I work on motorcycles. How many square feet is that shop? I don't think we've ever determined that over the years since you've been there. The shop is roughly... Maybe two thousand feet because the two thousand square got feet okay. garage a garage capable to put an RV in yet there's right. no room for an RV because <laughs> I have way too many two wheelers. Now the reason yeah, I ask of, how big it is a lot of projects. The reason I ask how big it is because if I ever build and I've thought about it an auxiliary garage slash shop, yeah. I want it to be bigger than yours. Just. So I can go, well, it's bigger than Robbins. It's bigger than Yelts. Yeah. So. You, you have something to start with, at least. Yes. So, right. So uh, people go, why'd you build it so big? Well, Yelts well, had one that was. I wanted, to put, in, I wanted to, to put my fifth wheel RV in it. So uh, it was built around the RV. Uh, and I had that RV roughly three years. And it was in there. It was in that garage twice Whoa. because I, I couldn't. There just wasn't room. Didn't but then I a... decided to sell it. That's the. Pro- I think we've discussed this where I had real issues with yes, that. Yes, you had a real go around with, with an RV dealer. Yeah, with I remember. The yeah. yeah. Ended up in a second RV, and now the, the the garage was designed around the first RV, and the second RV. The air conditioner on top of it was about an inch higher than the first one. Mm. Oh, boy. Oh, I see and this one coming. <laughs> it, in case you can't figure this out, it didn't, 
fit yeah. under the door. Yeah. And so this beautiful RV garage I built was worthless. <sighs> did you ever think about letting the air out of the tires? And I did. It in? Lower. I did. Oh, and I did that because the first time I got it stuck on the door, I had to get it out. So <laughs> the only way I could do that was, as you just suggested, sure. let some air out of the tires, and I got it out. But I figured to do that, Every time I went in and out of the garage was a little more of a hassle than I had planned, so I found a place to store it. So, and when, so where do you go uh, when you're, you know, RVing? You just bomb around the country? Where was the last place you, you know, took it? My, my wife has no interest in RVing with me. So, so you can, it ended up, right? So you can well, never get rid of the, you can never get rid of the RV. Now you have to well, keep it forever. Yeah, yeah, but the. the the people that liked it the best were my hunting and fishing buddies because I would bring it, and they called it the Taj, which was short for the Taj Mahal. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have to set up tents or camp or uh, kitchens or anything because we had it all on board. And it's interesting that we got on this subject because about six weeks ago, I traded the Taj in. And the and the boys are not real happy. I traded it in on a bachelor pad. I what? got a I got a uh, one of those uh, an all wheel drive van converted van. So uh, you mean like the Scooby? So wait, wait, you mean like the Scooby Mobile, like hippies <laughs> used to drive with shag yeah, carpeting the and mystery machine? Right. Yes, yes and no. This is a this is a pretty high end hippie van okay. um, made by Airstream. So okay, all right. It, and uh, it's really nice, but it's it's kind of a one or max two person job. And uh, my friends that, uh, when I used to bring the motel uh, up to the campsite, uh, now they're, they're not real happy because they got to go back to setting up their tent. Well, yeah, and they can't crap in your new van either. <laughs> no, they yeah, but it was it was only rare occasions that I allowed them to do that. Anyhow, uh, in the Taj, um, is it a trailer you or is it a? You don't want to overflow certain things. Yeah, right. I I, I understand. All right. So anyhow, but that's this has that. an engine and it drives, right? This isn't something you you, you and, tow. And and my my thinking behind this is that I would use it a lot more. Because it's far more convenient to just jump in a van and go. It was always a lot of work to set up the the the, the, the fifth wheel and a lot of preparation. Mm -hmm. You were set on where you could take it. But in in theory, I may just take off in my van and never come home. <laughs> so, well, that sounds like a little wife, bit of a threat. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at the Airstream vans now. They're 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 very nice, but it's not an RV or a fifth wheel anymore. That's for sure. Do you have an awning on the side of it? Oh yeah, yeah. It's got okay. a, um, and it's got you know, hey, it's got a microwave and an oven and a uh, and and a refrigerator and sure. a shower and a bathroom. It's 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 got pretty much what the other one had just in much smaller quarters <laughs> you have dogs right i have a dog at this point yeah is it dog have a bed does the dog have a bed or just sleep anywhere uh he has multiple beds and really? he sleeps at have you seen so the uh the bed for people that looks like a big dog bed <laughs> no i haven't seen one of those <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's not in a Wayfair don't, ad. Don't make, don't make sure you don't suggest that to Michelle, my wife. Okay, right. well, yeah. it's just, you know, because, you know, we're talking about between. campers and sleeping arrangements, and <laughs> it looks like yeah. a big dog bed, and you just throw it on the ground and crawl in it. There, well, I've done, I've slept in worse places, I can <laughs> promise you that. Sure. How much time did you spend at, at spring training this year, Robin? 
I, I didn't get over there. Well, that's not true. I got over there uh, for fantasy camp uh, for a day, and then when the sponsors all came in, I was able to go to the first evening of the sponsors event, but then I was, had to go to Chicago for a couple of days, so mixed, missed the next two d d uh, days of that. Wait a but, minute, you're uh, tired. I thought this was when you were going to relax and enjoy yourself, yeah, really. you know, when you, when, you, when you called it a career. Well, it's funny you bring that up also because this summer is going to be the busiest summer I've had since the day I retired from baseball. I got more you-know-what going on this summer, but it's supposed to all be good and fun, but sometimes I'm sure you guys no, you, you can overload fun to where it almost becomes work. So anyhow, I got a lot on my plate this summer, needless to say. So have you scheduled some stops at uh, AmFam Field for the summer? You going to swing by there? Yeah. Is that in your plans? A couple. I have a couple uh, stops at, at the ballpark, absolutely. And uh, looking forward to that. And it's nice to see the boys are off to a good start this year. Yep. Uh, I don't know. And it's a good thing we have a roof uh, back there again. I think it's mm. you guys. Well, know. Yeah. It's since it's pretty snow cold the last couple of days, <laughs> yes. whatever. Since it was snowing on opening day. But you've lived through those at County Stadium, right? Yeah, well, we were, you know, back when men were men, you played in that <laughs> stuff. So, <laughs> you know, we, we uh, although I, will, I do remember one particular game, but I don't think it was opening day. We started the game. And in the first inning, snowflakes started coming down to the point where the umpire said, we are done with this because he couldn't see the ball between the snowflakes. Yeah. Trying to call, uh, call the balls and strikes, and neither could the hitter. So I think I was at that game, Robin. It was, I think it was Kansas City. It was Ken very good. Yeah. It was Kansas City. Yeah. I was standing that was back before uh, I was a world-famous disc jockey and couldn't afford good seats, so I was sitting way up on top, me and all my stupid friends, and it was snowing well, so hard we couldn't see the field. That's it. And and it was also before before men were men, and we didn't <laughs> play that one. Yeah. So, anyway. I, I I remember that one very clearly. Yeah, I was like, well, I guess we're done. It got maybe, what, two innings in, and it was like, yeah, we're... Yeah. The flakes, it was kind of that wet snow. The flakes were almost as big as the baseball. That's yes. when it got a little confusing. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was nasty out there. But you you played in snow before. Uh, sort of. Um, it, you can't really play while it's snowing. But we certainly had games where there was snow on the side of the field where they would get it off. And, yeah. Um, actually, I wasn't playing but I was coaching at the time. We went into early season like now into Denver to play the Colorado Rockies, and it was their home opener. And when we went to the ballpark and looked out on the field, this might have been 11 o'clock, and it was a 1 o'clock start. 11 o'clock, literally, the field was covered in snow. And they still got the game started. They pushed the snow aside. I think the field had underground heating or something. And there were snow piles down the line, but we got the game in on time. So, you know, it is what it is. That's the, that's the chance you take when you start the season this early. Did you ever ride in the front seat of a fishing boat while it was being towed down the freeway by Bob Euchre? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a yes. I think I know where you're going with that. Well, we have a text. Yeah. <laughs> the, the story is you're in the ballpark. Uh, it's actually way better than that. Um, <laughs> we were fishing. We went fishing. At, this was during spring training at a, a lake called Lake Pleasant. And when we were training in Sun City, Lake Pleasant was about a half an hour from our spring training site. And Bob McClure, my roommate at the time, had a friend that loaned him a fishing boat that we could use for, during the spring. And this was before games had started, so we got off the field fairly early. And uh, we had 
a plan to after the workout was over to go fishing, and that would have been, uh, I think it was Moose Hawk. I'm not. I'm obviously not leaving the names out to protect. No, you want to. No, that's the good part. You expose everybody that was it on this because it's a caper, yeah. is what it is now. Robin. I have that it was Gumby Gorman. No, none and, of those. None of those are accurate. Okay. Uh, but it was McClure, myself, Moose Hoss, and Bob Uber. <laughs> All right. And so. We end up, there, there's some pretty exciting, but this story could go on forever, so I'm going to have to try to cut it a little short. There was some interesting moments out on the water while we were fishing, too, that I'll, that I'll leave for a, another day. But after we're done fishing, there was this, um, let's call it a hamburger joint. Okay. On the okay. way back, on the way back from the lake, to, it's now just getting dark. We stop at the hamburger joint that's only 10 minutes from the lake. And there's, um, they also serve ba uh, beer at this hamburger joint. And we go in for a quick hamburger and, uh, okay, one beer. And yeah, we'll just stop for one. You know how famous that is? We we'll just stop. We'll have, we have one. To Get out of here. Stop for because we had a team get together at my house that evening. Okay, so, so you're the at the lake. Team, you're at the lake. You've got to get back to your house for a team get together. But you think, let's stop for a burger and one will have one beer. Who? Well, we could only have one because my house is 45 minutes <laughs> from where we were at. Mm hmm. So it gets to the point where we're there having a beer, and this is out of town. This is not right in the city. And there's ranchers and cowboys and all kinds of people like that out in this area. Well, we're sitting there drinking a beer and having a uh, eating a burger. Two cowboys walk in, and as they walk up to the bar, they both have guns on their hip. I well, mean, this is the wild, wild west, and well, they have to give the guns to the bartender yeah. because you're not allowed to have your gun on your hip in this bar while you're eating. So they give the bartender the, the, the guns, and I'll fast forward this. All of a sudden, Bob Buecher and these two cowboys become best friends. Of course and they do. Okay. Yes. So anyhow, it's let, let's that go forward and say it's time to leave okay so we are in bob sullivan who was our uh uh clubhouse man at the time ran the clubhouse we had his rental car and uh i think euchre drove his rental car over and then we had the boat and uh behind bob mcclure's car okay i know the story getting way too long. I'm, I hope you guys have some time for me. No, no, I just I, I, I hear the whole story or most of it. This this is what it is. Okay. Are you guys okay with yeah, that? Yeah, good, good. yeah. Yes. It's hard to stop now. Anyhow, <laughs> it's time to leave. We go out. Somehow, you picks up a little pebble and throws it at McClure and it hits Bob McClure's rental car. <laughs> so, because it's a gravel parking lot. If this were a and Warner Brothers stuck. cartoon, Albert Fudd would have gone, who threw that walk? That's that? one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, <clears throat> a rock goes back each way, being off of Bob Sullivan's rental car. <laughs> now, we're, Max says, get in the car. Well, he starts driving away. He's towing a boat, and he's driving, and he says, get in the car, and I'm chasing after the car because he's driving. <laughs> well, I can't get in the car, and I dive in the back of the boat. <laughs> so now this parking lot is dark. There's no street lights out there, yeah. and there's yeah. one exit in a pretty big gravel parking lot. 
Well, he's going round and round and can't find the exit. And there's dust everywhere. And because rocks are being thrown, we finally get to the exit and we're out to the pavement and we're headed down this long, straight road. It's called the Carefree Highway. Okay. Headed to my house. Right. Well, and that's going fast. And I'm still in the boat. And, well, all of a sudden, from behind, he, or first he pulls over, lets me out of the boat, I get in the car. We get back on the highway, and we're going. And back behind us, a ways, we can see headlights coming. And they're coming fast. I said, Max, slow down. It might be the cops. He slows down. <laughs> hey, everybody be cool. This might be the cops. Yeah, yeah I'm in he the boat. Down and... As he slows down, this car is approaching fast. And this car pulls up beside us. It's the two cowboys driving, and they're in an old pickup truck with wooden sides that hold the sheep in. <laughs> and it's a step-side truck where you can stand on the outside. Sure. Well, lo and behold, the, the truck pulls. I said, Mac, it's those cowboys. And then they pull up. Next to us, and a guy named Bob Euchre is hanging on to the wooden slat on the step side of the truck, and he's got a boulder in his hand. <laughs> and he thinks it's funny as he pulls up alongside the side of us and launches it onto the hood of our car. <laughs> rental car? This is a rental car. The rental car yeah. pulling the boat. That is not ours either. Right, the borrowed boat and the rental car. <laughs> so, okay, everybody's had their fun. <laughs> we need to get over to my house because we have a team party to get to. How late are you for this party at this point with the boulders being thrown and the spinning around in the parking lot and the diving into the back of the fishing boat? Talking Ooh. to cowboys. Right. <laughs> well, let, let me tell you. When we pull into the driveway of my house, there's no cars. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, that's probably good. We beat them all here. Oh, good. We made it in time. We have time. We would have been, no, uh, we didn't make our own team party that I was throwing. <laughs> so, so, so everybody got there? Nobody's at your, nobody's at your house? No, they've all got, they've left. They left. Everybody left. It was it was a little past closing time. Ah. Oh, my God. It's, what, 2 o'clock in the morning now? Uh, that's probably a stretch because we had a, we still had spring training the next day, but it was it was late enough for everybody to say, hey, we're going home. we got to go to the ballpark. You were going to stop and have a hamburger and one beer, and then we'll go yeah. home. we got to get out of here, guys. Everybody's coming over to my house. Next thing yeah. you know, Euchre's got cowboy friends and a boulder. He's going 90 miles an hour hanging onto the side of a truck. Yeah. Well, thanks for clearing that up anyway, because we we're operating yeah. under the wrong story. Here's what I thought yeah. was going to happen. Oh. I thought you were going to oh. say, Bob Euchre makes these cowboy friends. He offers yeah. them a ride. There's no room for all of us in the car. Well, you can't ask no, the cowboys like to ride. Can't like, ask the like cowboys to ride in the back. I'll ride in back, and I thought, and you got home in time for the party. Not even close. Well, yeah, it, it didn't work. It wasn't it wasn't my brightest hour, in, <laughs> especially in my wife's eyes. I I uh, disagree. I disagree that. Hey, I will say, forty five years later, uh, we're still together. <laughs> Well, that's like that in a thousand. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You're going to go into the marriage hall of fame next, Robin. Well, I don't know. My wife should, that's for sure. Hey, Robin, we're, we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry I took so much of it. Nah, All right. it's fine. It's fine. It's always great to hear from you. Yeah. Thanks for helping All us right. out with well, the Mac guys, Fund. Keep, keep up the good work with the Mac Fund. We love you guys. All right. Robin Yount. Joining us on the Bob and Brian Mac Fund Radiothon. It's 1128.